Hey everybody, this is Elliot Kimmel here, and you're looking at my functional groups tutorial. This is intended for grade 12 biology students in the biochemistry strand, which is usually at the very beginning of the year. This is part way through, just a few days into the chemistry, and this is a, the part where everybody is, uh, regardless of your chemistry background, pretty much in the same boat learning new material. Um, Hopefully you've already covered functional groups uh, with your teacher and this is just another resource that you can use. Uh, either way, um, I've provided a PDF that you can download with the three pages that you can see right there in the video. Uh, so download that and you can use that and follow along with me as I go through some of the very typical functional groups. Keeping in mind that there are other functional groups, they're not all included in this tutorial. Uh, so this is a little, just a mini tutorial, try not to make it too, too long, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So what you see on this page here is 11 molecules, all right? I've drawn the carbons, the hydrogens, the oxygens, whatever other atoms are there. I am using these black lines to represent the stick bonds. So those are the bonds between the atoms. So here we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. These are all single bonds. And of course, when we see this, that would represent a double bond. Um, we are talking about functional groups and functional groups are part of a molecule that gives special chemical properties to that molecule. It's essentially the thing that makes the thing, uh, that makes the molecule react. Um, it's also the part of the molecule that puts it into a special family. So for example, you've probably all heard of alcohol before, but alcohol is not just one substance, it's a, it's a family. And there are different types of alcohol. There is methanol and ethanol and propanol. And so we're not going to be looking at those specific names, but we are going to look at what makes something an alcohol, what makes something an aldehyde. Perhaps you've heard of formaldehyde, the preservative for dissection specimens. So what is an aldehyde? All right, so uh, we've got the molecules here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle the functional groups, and then we'll write the name down underneath to indicate uh, what, what family it is based on the functional group, okay? So here's how we do this. Follow along with me. In this molecule, you will see carbon, some hydrogens, oxygen, and hydrogen as well. And I'm gonna circle this part of the molecule right here. And that part of the molecule is called a hydroxyl group or an alcohol group. So this is in the family of alcohols or hydroxyls. I prefer the name hydroxyl. We'll be using that quite a bit throughout the course. All right, so OH on its own, connected to just a carbon, is called a hydroxyl. Let's look at molecule number two. COC is the special functional group within this molecule, so I'm going to circle that, C, O, and C, and that is the ether functional group, E-T-H-E-R, so write that down here, ether, and that makes this molecule a type of ether. Now, which type of ether? We're not identifying that. We're just saying that it's in the family of ethers. Over to this molecule, we see there is a C with a double bond oxygen. Now, that's a very typical feature. You'll see that in many of these molecules. Um, and so then what is going to be important is what's attached to that C double bond O. Now, many molecules have carbon and hydrogen is just all over the place. So um, if you see that, that's not overly important. But when you see other atoms like oxygen or nitrogen, uh, that's, that's more important. So the thing to watch out for is you can see here, don't circle this, <laughs> O and H looks like an alcohol, just like in the first molecule here. But because that is attached to a carbon with a double bonded oxygen, all right, that now is not an alcohol anymore, although we will circle that, we will grab that, but we extend that to the C double bond O, and that is called a carboxyl. This is a hydroxyl, this is carboxyl. Sometimes you'll hear it said carboxylic acid or just acid, all right, carboxyl. Um, all right, let's just move on. We also have the C double bond O again, but this time there's nitrogen attached to that with two H's. So now we grab this and all of this, and this is called an amide. 
Notice that again off to the side whether it's the right or the left that's not important there's a bunch of carbon and hydrogen that's just the extra stuff it's this stuff that's important and the only way that you're going to know what to circle and understand this is is by practice the more that you see these molecules and and be able to recognize oh I see a C double bond O N H2 uh, then the easier it will be for you to say, oh, that's an amide, as opposed to just looking at it going, I have no idea what I would circle. Of course you don't. It takes, it takes time and practice. So this is an amide. Down to number five, we have a molecule with just carbon and hydrogen and single bonds. So this is a hydrocarbon molecule. And for this, I tend to just circle actually the whole thing. And this is called an alkane now again there are specific names for all of these molecules there is methane you may have heard about ch4 methane ethane this happens to be propane then there's butane and pentane and all of these things but we're not getting into those specific names we're just looking at general family names uh, as designated by the functional group so this molecule would be a type of alkane which one we're not specifying this molecule here has the C double bond O. On one side of this carbon with the C double bond O is a CH3 group. And on the other side is a hydrogen. Now that's important because when we look at molecule 7, we'll see the C double bond O again. We'll see the same carbon group on the left, but on the right, another carbon group instead of a hydrogen. So what we're going to do is we're going to circle this stuff right here. And that is an aldehyde. This is in the family of aldehydes. This one over here, we see the C double bond O, carbon group on one side, carbon on the other. Now, this is not an aldehyde anymore. Instead, what we're going to do is I'm going to circle that. I'm going to circle the carbon on the right and the carbon on the left. So C double bond O with carbons on both sides instead of one side. This is called a ketone. So we have aldehyde, ketone with very subtle differences. And then we come over to molecule number eight, C double bond O, carbon group on the left. Again, just like all these other ones, but on this side, be careful. There is a carbon group, but there's an oxygen in the middle. So this, what we do is we circle that part, the oxygen, the carbon, and the carbon. When we have a C double bond O with a carbon group on one side, and it doesn't matter if it's on the left or the right, and an oxygen carbon group on the other side, that is an ester. Down to number nine, we introduce a new atom. This is P for phosphorus. Phosphorus has a double bond to oxygen and then an OH group there and an OH group there and then O and then the rest of the molecule. This, we circle that part and that which is a, like a hydroxyl group and that part and we get all of that and that is a phosphate group and that will become very important later on when you do metabolism when you'll be learning about ATP adenosine triphosphate has three of these phosphate groups in it okay on to number 10 as you can see this is only made of carbon and hydrogen again unlike this one with phosphorus or this one with oxygen so this is a hydrocarbon once again but it doesn't have all single bonds so it's not an alkane instead we circle the carbon to carbon double bond that's called a double bond there and this is now an alkene so five was an alkane and 10 is an alkene. Now, one thing I want you to note is the number of bonds around all of the atoms and just basically learn those, memorize those. Hydrogen always forms one bond. So in every one of these molecules, you will see one stick or one black line coming out. Hydrogen always makes one bond. Carbon always makes four. So here we see one, two, three, and four. If you take this carbon, one, two, three, four. All right, so in every molecule you see here, one, two, three, four, carbon makes four. Oxygen always makes two bonds. So there's one bond, there's another. Uh, this one, double bond, all right? So keep that in mind, carbon with four, oxygen with two, hydrogen with one, and you know we'll see a few other molecules, like for example, uh, nitrogen always makes three bonds. 
Okay, number 11, again, is a hydrocarbon. There's only carbon and hydrogen, but now there's a triple bond between these carbons. Notice that this carbon is still making four bonds, three there and one there, and same on the other side. So I'm gonna circle this carbon along with the triple bond, and this is an alkyne. So we have alkane, alkene, and alkyne. They're all hydrocarbons and they all have specific names, but we're doing just the general family names or functional groups. So these are the functional groups in the molecules that give it its special qualities. It's not an extra little hydrogen here or an extra carbon there. It's the functional group that really matters. All right. Let's go on to the next page. We have just a few more examples and some of these uh, are repeats. And once again, I'm not doing all of the functional groups under the sun, just a few that I've chosen that you will see very regularly. So have a look at this molecule. Once again, your eye should go to the C double bond O and then you look at what's on either side. C double bond O, four bonds around carbon, two around oxygen, carbon group on one side, carbon group on the other. So we're gonna grab this C double bond O carbon group on one side, carbon group on the other, and it's good enough just to circle the carbon atom. You don't need all the extra atoms that are part of the carbon group, just need the carbon. This is a ketone again. Number 13, OH should look familiar. This OH is not attached to a C with a double bond O, it's just OH on its own attached to sort of a carbon chain. And there happens to be another one in the same molecule. So these are both hydroxyls. So this is in the family of hydroxyl. Or this would be a type of alcohol. On to number 14. A lot of carbon and hydrogen, but we throw some nitrogen in there. And when nitrogen is together with just two hydrogens and no C double bond O, we grab just this part here. And that is an amino group. Now, um, it's in the family of amines, but I like to call it amino because um, then you'll hear about molecules called amino acids, which I'm sure you've heard of before. Amino acids are molecules that have an amino group. And well, let's do this next one right here, right now quickly. C double bond OH, carboxyl. Now there happens to be two in this molecule, two carboxyl groups. An amino acid has a carboxyl group at one end, and at the other end, it has an amino group, an H2. Now, this is not an amino acid because it has two carboxyls. So that's why it's called an amino acid. So that, that's another reason why you need to learn your functional groups. So 15 is carboxyl. Number 16. Well, as soon as you see the C with the triple bond, you know that that is an alkyne. Number 17. Again, we have the NH2, just like this one. But in this one, number 14, the NH2 group, the amino group was connected to just carbon with a bunch of hydrogens and other carbons attached. This amino group is attached to a C double bond O. So now it has a different name. It's not called amino anymore. It's called amide. This molecule is an amide. It's a type of amide. All right, so you have to be very careful and look at what is attached to the amino group and then it may change the name a little bit. Number 18, C double bond O, hydrogen on one side of that carbon, carbon group on the other side. We don't care about the rest of the molecule. We just call, we just care about that part. This is an aldehyde again. All right, so I've got a little task for you to do now. Let's jump over to the very last page. And we've got a big molecule here. I want you to have a look at that and start getting your eye to zoom in and see if you can pick out a few functional groups. because that's the task at hand. I just made this molecule up. It's not necessarily a real molecule, although it, it, it follows all the rules, or most of the rules of chemistry in terms of having the right number of bonds uh, around each atom, all right? And, you know, and, and the molecule works out. Its shape may be a little bit weird, but anyways, doesn't matter. This molecule has many functional groups, so it's not in one particular family. 
All right, so here's what we're going to do. Let's just find a place to start. So for example, let's let's start up here. I see a C double bond O OH. That is a very common functional group. We're going to circle that. And that is a carboxyl group. How about this? C O C all single bonds. Let's grab that. Ether. Let's go down below. We see our typical NH2 amino. We got to look, what's it attached to? C double bond O. Oh, so it's not an amino group anymore. This is now an amide. Notice, however, carbon is making four bonds, oxygen is making two, hydrogen is making one, nitrogen is making three. So learn those, those bonds. Let's go over right beside it here, carbon. Here's OH. What is it attached to? It's not attached to C double bond O like it is up here, just a regular C. So we grab all that. Hydroxyl. That's a hydroxyl group. Come above here. I see a C double bond O. So look, what's it attached to? Carbon on one side, carbon on the other side. So we're going to grab that part. The carbon on one side, the carbon on the other side. Ketone. Now let's distinguish that from down here. There's another C double bond O. So look at how, how plentiful those are, all right? C double bond O, so what's attached to this carbon? A carbon group on one side, but a hydrogen on the other, instead of carbon and a carbon on one side and a carbon on the other. This has got carbon on one side, hydrogen on the other. That makes this an aldehyde, just this part right here. Don't go circling this as well. Okay, you don't need that. That's that's extra stuff. That's not part of it. Aldehyde. All right, let's come over to the side over here, and I see N and two H's attached to carbon with some other stuff on it, but not C double bond O like here. That makes this our functional group. Amino. This is an amino group. Let's come over to this one, C double bond O. Carbon on one side, oxygen carbon on the other. So sometimes you have to look down the chain. Therefore, we grab this stuff here, that carbon, come all the way down, oxygen carbon. That makes this an ester. Last one, I think. <laughs> Coming up here with our phosphorus here, double bonded oxygen, OH, OH, O. So we're going to grab that part. And this, come along here. This is a phosphate group. Now, as I had said, there are other functional groups in the world, uh, some of which you'll be learning in the grade 12 bio course. All right, but I've just focused on some very common ones. So I hope that helps you in your little review. Don't forget to check out some other Zero Buyer resources on this very topic. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.